I'm sitting here today with Danielle, who I met just in the magic of online meetings <laughs> in the past few months and um, came into her field as well in terms of the work that she's doing at the moment. And I'm really inspired by the message that you're sharing, especially the work that you're doing also like with women. And um, I'll in a moment just pass this straight to you so you can share who you are and what you do. Um, and then we'll go into the conversation from there. But just as a prelude, what really sparked me to want to get onto this conversation with you was the post that you shared um, about body image, especially. That was like the way that you expressed that and how I resonated with that just felt really potent. It's like, oh, let's have this conversation deeper. Um, so for now, though, can you just, yeah, let us know, like, what what are you doing right now in your life? What are you sharing with the world? And then we'll um, we'll dive into some more avenues from whatever that comes up with. Beautiful. Um, I always find like the who am I question, like it can be so surface level, but then it's like also like deeply philosophical because every time I'm like, who am I now? Today? <laughs> you know, like I'm always changing. Um, but I guess my... <sighs> The title that people would refer to me as is I am very fortunate enough to be an Olympian. Um, I am also an author. Um, I'm a speaker and as well a women's coach. Um, it's helping women find more clarity on their life so they can go after and live their dreams. Um, the way that I kind of got onto this path was you know, it's all written in my book, which is called The Unlikely Olympian. But the long story short is I was a girl who I think so many of us, and I can imagine your listeners would resonate with, it's like, you just know there's something in your heart, in your soul that you have to offer to the world. And you just cannot see how the regular constraints of society is going to allow you to do that because you just don't, you just can feel there's like something special inside of you and that I believe there's honestly something special inside of all of us it's just if we choose to listen to that whisper in our soul and I felt that my whole life um but I had so much raining down of like limiting beliefs and self-hatred and lack of self-love and um in the midst of all of this as a teenager I also was a synchronized swimmer um, and very much kind of the girl on the, the chubby girl on the team that was never going to go anywhere or, or so I thought. And this incredible journey and opportunity, you know, led me from in 2013 being a very, um, you know, unfit concussed university dropout to in 2016 becoming an Olympian for the Australian national synchronized swimming team um, because I got an opportunity and took the greatest leap of my life and chose to believe in myself and take action and just choose to believe in what if I can be the 1% that does achieve their dreams um, and and I did that and now from that like I I made this vow to myself that I said if I somehow can pull this off and do this thing that is seems so impossible and is such a you know um, you know whatever you say, everyone in the world knows what an Olympian is everyone knows what the Olympics are like it's just this whenever people change whenever I say that word and um, to achieve this very like a matrix level of achievement and accolade that people always look up to. Um, I vowed that I was going to do something greater with it because it was so much bigger than me. Um, and that's led me down the path of writing my book and um, the work that I do now, which is of coaching women and, and speaking as well upon it. And, you know, the journey that I will continue to be on. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of who I am. And I'm also based in Bali at the moment, but I'm moving back to Canada very soon. And I guess a child of the world um, who's just on the next step of her adventure. Mm. Yeah. So rich. She really did a good job at summarizing like a, a, what I would imagine is a very long detailed story. Um, <laughs> but yeah. it's helpful that you have a book for that <laughs> as well. So yeah, I'll put all of the information about um, your book and, and what your work is and everything um, in the notes for the listeners. I think what sparked me is like, <clears throat> What about that situation, that, that experience that you've had um, inspired you to help others? Like, was it the, you know, feeling what it really means when you reach your dreams or when you go after them? Like, because I would imagine there's so many people who do go down, you know, like um, their chosen field, whether it's elite, um, like athletics of any kind or business, but it doesn't translate to then wanting to like 
share that or help others in some way. It's like they, they stay into that path and then that becomes their life. Like, but for you, there was just like, there's a shift there where it's now like you're, yeah, you're letting that serve a helping others in some way. So what is it about that experience that led you to want to share it? Yeah, I think what I, I had this point and um, so it's, it's obviously 2020 right now. And my kind of goal a, a couple of years ago was to go to the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, which good thing I didn't because it's postponed. Um, but, you know, that was because, you know, part of me was like, oh my gosh, I never expect to go to one Olympics. So imagine if I go to two. And I just was at this point as an athlete, um, which is uh, you, the first time in my life to, to be able to go after this, I had to be the most selfish I had ever been. I had always been a very big people pleaser. And um, it was a blessing to learn how to be selfish because it also helped me in so many ways understand, you know, the power of taking the negative connotation away from selfishness because it allows us to prosper and have so much more to give from. But to be an athlete, you really have to be the most ultimately selfish person because you have to everything that you do in your life has to go towards your performance and I was at this point where you know I I had it all um you know I was doing something that I loved I was surrounded by people that I loved and at that point you know I didn't realize I had to dig further but I I thought I had a surface level love for myself because I was finally in quote unquote my ideal body um and so I was like I have those three things what am I missing? And I realized that it was this level of contribution. And I think, you know, if I think, you know, all of us are told like the basics of psychology, like Maslow's pyramid of needs is like, you know, after safety and security is done, you know, you get to the top and it's self-actualization. And I heard someone um, share this recently that I loved. He said that he thinks the top of the pyramid is not actually self-actualization, but helping the self-actualization of others, because that's the greatest feeling of service. And, you know, I kind of put together this understanding of in the past being a people pleaser, um, combining with you know the importance of self-care and putting myself first and realize that I can do both in a way that I can serve myself and love myself but also help other people and reach my ultimate level of fulfillment in in service um, of others but not to the detriment of myself so that's kind of what put me on this path of just realizing getting to this point where I was doing the beautiful things I was traveling the world I was part of the Australian national team I like got to like be around incredible people like prime ministers and billionaires and like lots of really cool things. And you just get to this point of like, there's something missing. And, and that's kind of what I figured out that it is. Um, and it's, which has led me onto the plight of everything that I've done right now. I, I really resonate with that. It's, um, and I think it comes to our values, you know, I think for sure, like, That hierarchy you said, I feel that as well. And I feel like, you know, the most self-actualized people that we know about are those who have shared that with us. That's why we know about them. Right. And it's, um, it's, it's really true. Like if I think, I, I don't know, I'm trying, like, I don't know the answer to this, but I feel like there's, there are different levels of, of values that we hold. Um, maybe it's to do with our life phase, our experience, our karma, whatever it might be where contribution or sharing or teaching is just more heightened within us in our value system as people, as individuals. Um, I think partly that's also to do with like human design, astrology. Like I believe in all of those things yeah. and um, the way that we just communicate with the world and how we feel contribution is expressed because we could mm. also be feeling like our contribution is being fully expressed when we're creating a family and our work isn't the yeah. contribution the family is. But I think I resonate with you on the same level in terms of like, you know, there's, there's when I was studying university and I was um, at a top university, I was at the top of my class at one point as well. I was studying something really great. I was like living in Sydney, had a good job. Well, had a good job as a student could have at university mm. as a student who needs a job. <laughs> it was like working at um yeah, this like really high up nightclub and it was like glitzy <laughs> and glamorous and I dreamt about that nightclub in my dream last night too. So weird. So um, but I was just like, why, why does this not feel right? I'm doing everything right. 
everything that everyone said is the thing you do after you go to high school, you go to the university and you study and you like, and you set yourself up and it's like, and also I was studying something that was really interesting to me, but it didn't feel like, like alive. It didn't feel this like spark of juice. And I felt that spark of juice when I would talk to people about spirituality or like growth awareness, like I would feel that then, but I also thought like, I can't do anything in that. Who does things in that field? This was also before Instagram really blew up and we like just kind of had that that sharing of, of what working really can look like in so many different forms and what influencing or sharing or teaching can look like in different forms. I was like, yeah, I want to teach things, but I don't want to be a like primary school teacher. So what it, how do I bridge this? Um, but yeah, just the fulfillment of sharing and lighting up is what lights us up. Um, totally. so I can do that with you. <laughs> you have a dog yeah, and, in the background because it's yes, Bali. I, yeah, it's Bali. Foster puppy. Sorry, she's you know that that's what Bali is. <laughs> yeah, I don't notice that kind of thing at all. But I'm like, if anyone's listening, it's like, yeah, this this you you'd be hearing that right now. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's just you just get used to it. <laughs> Um, I want to, I want to bring something back. So this is more into the topic of our discussion because there's so many mm. paths to go, go down in your story, but again, why I really wanted to talk to you. Um, and I, I think I'd just love to share, I'd love for you to share where, you know, which post I'm talking about your yeah. on Instagram, where did it come from? Like in posting that and how did it feel to put that out into the world um and you can also just kind of mention um to those yeah. who seen, like what what the post was saying yeah I think the title of it is like I've gained weight and I'm still enough um and you know I it's funny when you describe parts of your life because even though you know I've, I've shared the whole like Olympian story and it's amazing like there's so many like tales that also intertwine through that and like one of the big ones was um I struggled like I mentioned before I struggled with my weight um you know growing up and it was you know what I share is just I think part of it probably like a bit of like ancestral wound, um, but also just this feeling of not enough and trying to fill that space with food and creating a like binge cycle. Um, and I got into this place where I found more out about well health and wellness. And I started to like, just realize what made me feel good. And I, I got on this train of, you know, I think you do in your own, a lot of people do in their own um, self-development process where you just start to eat what makes you feel good. Um, and then I went on, took this beautiful leap to becoming um, a national team athlete. And all of a sudden I went from a girl who kind of struggled with her weight was just starting to eat healthy to be some, to be somebody that was exercising six to eight hours a day. So therefore naturally your body changes. Like that's just the way that it happens. And it was amazing because I all of a sudden started to be in this body type that I was like, always desired like I I felt like you know and I've shared this on different avenues but like growing up I would sit in the mirror and just like hold my skin and just cry and just wish that I could cut parts of it off because I felt so much shame and hatred for the reflection that I felt and I just imagined like you know this dream version of who I felt that I could be and then I I was becoming it and it was just felt like I was in this parallel dimension like literally you know when I share my story like I always, like, I literally quantum leaped into this reality that I created and it was, it felt amazing. And I thought, um, I was like, oh, cool. Like I've lost all this weight now. This is amazing. I'm an athlete. This is great. I am at my ideal weight. I'm going to go to the Olympics and I'm going to be skinny forever. And I'm going to be happy forever. <laughs> like kind of like the lie that like diet culture shares with us, you know? Um, and then as it happens, um, you know, I, I got to the Olympics and I ended up spending five years on the national team and, but I would take breaks in between, you know, because you, you just can't consistently train at that amount of hours. So I, I went from being at the Olympics and training, you know, six to eight hours a day, six days a week. And then I had time off and then the weight would come back on and the self-hatred would come back. And I thought it was, you know, I started to try and like overexercise and even like after the Olympics, like I was trying, which is so impossible, like to exercise three to four hours a day by myself, which is like definitely exercise addiction. And 
it's just not feasible and not healthy for the body. Mm -hmm. And I went through these periods of like, I would train for a world championships and I would get skinny again. And then I would take time off and then I would gain weight. And I just felt like this cycle. I was like, what is wrong with me? Why? And I had this like self hatred, like come up again and again and again. And, um, I started to realize that it had so little to do with the exercise and so much to do with like the self-love. Um, and you know, I was even asked, so last year I competed at, at world championships as, um, Australia's first mixed wet, which was a great honor. Um, and my coach asked me in 2018 and at this time I wasn't training intensely. So I was probably at like, you know, an average weight for my body. And she said to me, do you want, you know, I'd love for you to be the, the female in the mixed wet partnership. And the first comment that I said to her is like, fuck, I'm going to need to get skinny again. Um, and that was the first thing that entered my mind because of the other thing in the world of synchronized swimming is like, you are very harshly judged on aesthetically, you know, obviously at your performance, but like you walk out there in an itty bitty tiny little bathing suit, there's nothing to hide, you know? And so it was intimidating and being this, like the way that kind of works in the world of synchronized swimming is the female is like the dainty, small, tiny, like beautiful, like ballerina, like it's kind of a, like the similar, what you used to see in ballroom dancing, like, you know, the, the women becomes a spectacle and so I thought the only way that I could get there was um to to get skinny again and funny enough like <laughs> which is not funny enough of course it worked this way because the universe you know gives me these blessings I like ended up going to world championships being the heaviest that I ever was as an athlete which I wasn't heavy but in the world of synchro I wasn't the, the skinny petite little person I I thought that I, I needed to be and I retired and I just had this realization of this cycle that I had been through for the past 20 years of my life. And I was like, it's not about the weight. I need to go deeper and deeper and deeper and figure out what it is on so many levels. And I took this leap to moving to Bali um, with me and my partner. And, you know, part of the reason was to start this business and share, you know, everything with the world. But the other part was just to go on a deep dive of self-love as kind of Bali forces you to do. You kind of have to come and heal and face your shit that you've been running away from. And even for me, like, and you know, the reason that I, we found each other, cause I love that you do stuff around the feminine because I lived so deeply in the masculine for so many years. I, I actually didn't even know what it was. Like I, I told myself I needed to slow down, but I didn't know how to do that you know so because on the other side of that my body was you, you do that much exercise to your body and it, it it eventually has it does something to you you know we're not meant to live in fight or flight mode for that long so I got on this beautiful journey of healing and loving myself and realizing that um so much of it had nothing to do with weight and all to do with self-hatred and self-loathing and work through my own healing and the beauty of Bali has allowed me to do that and um, am I 1000% healed? No, but am I like a miles away than I was like a year ago when I was here? A hundred percent. And I think what makes me so passionate about this as well is because I think so many women in the plight of self-love, we think that, you know, in the you know matrix societal version, like we need to wait till we love ourselves or we look right or we lose weight to f then do the thing that we want to do right and even though we might not consciously do that so many people go okay cool so like when i get like lose the 10 pounds or do this then i'm going to like start to love myself and then i'm going to start to you know um go after what i want and then i'm going to start to live my dreams but it's like actually the opposite um and that's this I've always known that, but I didn't embody it. And this process of like having to really intensely embody it of being here and face myself has been this beautiful journey of realizing that, yeah, my body's gained weight in the past year because I haven't been an elite athlete and that's okay, but it actually has nothing to do with the worth that I have for this world. So that's kind of like a very long winded version of that post. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, I, I resonate a lot actually within like a year's journey, the year journey that kind of you've had because this time last year I ran a marathon. So all of that last year I was training for the marathon um, and like I've, I've always been a runner. I've always moved my body a lot. Like I love running and I just wanted to do it. And, and I was also teaching yoga like every day, um, almost every day, 
like a lot multiple times. So I was, I would get up, go for a half marathon as a training run and then go and teach like intense yoga classes. And then after the marathon, I also stopped teaching yoga at the same time. So I'm at the heaviest I've ever been. It's not, it's like, it's actually a very healthy weight for my body. Um, Mm. But it's taken a, a lot of different experiences of facing what arises in me when I've noticed this, when my clothes don't fit from last year anymore, you know, Mm -hmm. when people see me now and they're like, Oh wow, you look so much fuller in your face. Like it's that you're beautiful and all of this and that. And, and it's like, for me, it's been a beautiful journey because, um, you know, in my past I had, I had a disorder, I had an eating disorder, though that wasn't actually yes, it was fueled a little bit by the aesthetics, but it wasn't, that's not actually where it came about because even when I was really, really little, very, very thin, I did not like my body then either because I I wanted to gain weight, but it was all about the control and the rules and the perfection piece. So it wasn't so much, like I didn't start losing weight because I wanted to lose weight. I just started losing weight because I wanted to put my energy into just something else because I felt so unhappy with my life. And I share about this in other things, other um, podcasts and posts, so I won't go into it now, but it was basically just around like not being able to deal with my own inner world. So mm-hmm. I tried all of my focus on something else it was exercise and healthy eating. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, definitely like that did bring also into this, this, this field for me of when, how my body does change so much, you know, when I'm training for a marathon, when I'm not training for a marathon, when I was really unwell before I was unwell, um, just the, the fact that our bodies are so mutable and so adaptable, like that's one thing that always brings me peace around this space as well. It's like, of course our body has changed. It's going to, if we're attached to any state, whether it's healthy or not, whether it's luscious and curvy or not, like if we're attached to any of it as being the way, the best, Mm -hmm. then we're setting ourselves up for failure because we're always going to be then disappointed if something changes. So something that's really mm-hmm. beautiful, I think, in my journey of, of recently, you know, coming to really come into terms with like the body that I'm in has not been, yeah, there's been moments where I'm like, I'm sexy like this, like, mm, I'm more like, sexy. And like, yeah, that's great. Yeah. But that's not it for me. That's not where the true healing is. Because if then I go, I love myself now because... I'm bigger because I'm luscious, because curviness is better, because of this, then what happens if that then changes, right? Then we don't love ourselves. Like if it's conditional in any way, whether it's conditional because it's good or conditional because it's bad, like what whatever it is, we're setting ourselves up for this, this, this suffering. This we're always going to be changing. So my biggest piece around body love has really just been acceptance of what is. And then when you accept whatever it is, you're not fighting with it. There's no resistance. There's no, I have to change because of this. It's just then a like, what feels good now? The pizza mm-hmm. feels good now. The not exercising feels good now. The exercising feels good now. Like, but it's not about anything because everything mm. is actually fine as it is. Yeah, a hundred percent. And then like, I'm sure you would agree as well. Like when you're in that state, you're so much more connected to your like intuition and your inner knowing because you're not like trying to control everything from this like structural societal belief system of how you should be or this conditioning of the past of how you believe that is the right way. And like, it's allowed, like it just, I, I, I feel so much, and I can imagine you as well, like you feel so much more free not having these rules that your brain tells you that you need to do. And like, you know, eating intuitively and exercising intuitively and like just listening because our bodies are like the wisest things that exist, but we just so often don't take the time to listen. And I think it's just, yeah, it's so freeing. And I love that you said, it's just like accepting you where you are at and knowing that that will change. And I think it's taking the, this belief system of like our worth is based on a certain size, shape, weight, or 
color or gender or look or whatever and that like I just love to like I call it like this is just our human suit you know like our soul chose a human suit and this is the human suit that we choose to walk in this life and it's going to do the most that it can when we love it and not when we um, hate upon it and it's just even like I think you know going into like in my own like spiritual journey of understanding like the vibration of everything Mm -hmm. and and really what's helped me is coming back to like how can I be in the highest vibration of love and whatever I do maybe the highest vibration of love for me today does mean to like do a really good workout because it makes me feel good or maybe it means to rest or maybe it means to go and eat the pizza or maybe it means to eat a salad but just like whatever you're doing, doing it from this state of love and not from the state of hate or guilt or regret, because that's when we fall into this dangerous pattern. And then when you're in that as well, I think what's, what happens is you actually, you listen to the signs of your body and you give it what it needs. And it starts to, mm-hmm. it starts to heal you and help you, um, do what you need to do. Um, and, even knowing like so much of it as well, like has nothing to do with weight. It has all to do with like our shadow, what we don't want to touch, our belief systems, our inner child, our stories, our like, you know, uh, pain around like our, our womb and our own healing journeys that we need to go on. And I think that was like a really big awakening for myself as well. Like um, realizing that it not, none of it has to do with weight and it has all and everything to do with internally and, at the same time as women coming from this place of like, you know, when we judge others, it's only because we're judging ourselves and whatever weight, shape or size any woman is, it, it doesn't matter. Everyone and all of us can have the same fear around weight and food and, you know, whether you're in the ideal body or, you know, that the society tells us or not. Um, yeah. And, and knowing that it all comes back to like this feeling state. So yeah, I, I love that you shared that. And I think it's, it's unfortunately the story of this generation of women and makes me so like, you know, I think one of the other avenues that I really want to share about, I, I didn't want to up until this point because I knew I wasn't embodying it. But now that I feel like I'm such more, much more of an embodiment of this message, I really want to make sure that it's this powerful mm-hmm. um, thing in this world. And even I think with the body love movement, sometimes we can still be in this shame thing, right? It's like, you know, yeah body love of the bigger woman and that's amazing and they're shaming the skinnier woman and then uh, vice versa and it's just like oh my god we just all need to stop judging and just come yeah. back to like are you in a state of love do you love yourself like and that's enough yeah yeah exactly it's like i've always had this issue with like you know strong is sexy not skinny is sexy it's like what if somebody is naturally thin because they are thin and they cannot put weight on like i had a friend growing up and she tried to put weight on she couldn't like it's like whenever there's any kind of judgment conditionality around it no one's going to feel good about that unless the person Mm -hmm. thinks that they're that in that moment but again everything changes in life we're going to change you know we're all eventually going to get you know old right now if if the people who are listening are younger and you know like us it's like everything's going to change um and that that is that key pace sense. So how can I be in the love the vibration of love right now? I love that you said that because it's not about like, it's, you know, I think people get this thing. It's like, love yourself. You just got to love yourself. And it's like for someone who's coming from self-hatred in that moment, when you just say love yourself, it's like, mm. how can they jump from hating themselves to loving themselves straight away? Cool. That's not it. It's about being in love vibration. So then it's a different question. It's not like, how how am I supposed to love myself? I don't even like myself. It's like, Mm -hmm. all right, then just accept where you are. Just accept Mm -hmm. yourself. And then when you accept yourself, you're present. And when you're present, presence is already in love vibration. So then it's all about Mm -hmm. what do I need? What does joy want right now? What is like, Mm -hmm. what is, you know, my energy need right now? Is it rest? Is it movement? Like it's different questions we ask ourselves from that place. Mm, 100% and that's like something that helps me as well kind of like what you said is 
Um, cause at first, you know, when you're in that hate, how do you go to love? And someone said to me, you just get to neutrality first. It's not that. And that was like a big step for me. It's just like, it's not that I like every moment I'm like, Oh my God, I love my body. It's just more like, this is just a body. And like someone explained it to me really well. Like we think of like, you know, little kids before the age of five, like they just walk around like so confident. They never like, you know, unless they've been really conditioned by their environment, they don't walk around like judging, like they're like, like baby tummy in the mirror they just like walk around they don't care like they eat until they're full and then they or sometimes they eat lots of food and sometimes they don't eat at all like you know the the just the innocence and like the lack of care of like what other people think that children have like I think that's the state more so that we need to get to and like yes we're gonna have moments of like absolutely loving what we see but it's more so this is just a physical representation of my soul um and I choose to not have it any um, I choose to be it for it to be as worthy as my soul is. And yeah, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. I, I love that you, yeah. The thread about <laughs> children, like it's, it's reclaiming <laughs> our innocence. It's unlearning, 100%. you know, it's, it's unlearning to the point of coming back to this innocent play of life, which really is the presence again, like mm-hmm. kids present mm-hmm. because, they haven't learned how to plan for the future and think about time in a certain way. They experience mm-hmm. time in a very different way. And we know this where we've been children, like we, we understand what it was like. Um, and I think people just think, Oh, I, you know, but I know too much now. I can't go back to that innocence. It's like, you can, you can, mm-hmm. because innocence is just presence. It's just being mm-hmm. innocent and this witnesser and this player in life from a state where you're not manipulating it or yourself. It's like, it's flowing with it. Again, it's like the feminine. Mm. Um, it's like the presence. I, sorry. It's just like, it's like presence. And I think lack of measurement, like we need to stop measuring, like whether it be your calories or your exercise or your food, it's just taking away the measurement because I think that's as a society and as women, that's where we get fucked in the mind. Yeah. Um, be, and we just need to be like, when we're in the present moment, you're going to do exactly what you need to do because your body knows. Yes. Um, and that's where the magic happens. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I want to ask um, what, for anyone who's listening, this will be super helpful. And I'm just intrigued as well. Like when you're having, when, when your judgment comes back, when you're like mm. kind of whatever it, it, it is that you're saying about your body in that moment, when it comes in, you're having a bad body image moment or day. Um, what do you do to shake yourself out of that? Mm, that's Practice. a really good question. Yeah. I think it's important to know as well. Like, even though I speak of this now, it doesn't mean like I'm a human being, I have my moments, but the, like the moments that I have are a minuscule amount to what they used to be. Yeah. You know, and I love to share is like, um, if we have 60 to 70,000 thoughts in our brain every single day and how much, what percentage of that is like hatred towards yourself. And if like, I wrote a book at 70,000 words, 70,000 thoughts. If you could create a book out of your day, would someone want to read your book? You know, because it is, is it something uplifting and inspiring or is it something that someone's not going to make anyone like walk away and, and feel good about? So I think it's, <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> and it's, when I have those days and those moments, it's so many things. I think part of it is just like the, because it's so, it can be so sub- ingrained in your subconscious, right? And our subconscious run, runs like 90 to 95% of our life. It's like consciously having the thought of like, not, no, 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 I'm not going to choose that, you know? Um, and if it's like you walk past the mirror and just saying, no, I choose to love myself. No, I choose to, I choose mm-hmm. to feel good. And then what really helps me as well is like changing my state, um, like, you know, d- dancing or even like what's really helped as well is like connecting with my body. So like touching myself, I think so many women, we don't touch ourselves. And it's like, we, it's, and we think, and probably some women are like, oh, that's weird. It's because we've been conditioned to think that way. Right. So like put your hands on your breast, put your hands on where it makes you uncomfortable and like send it love. Another thing that helps is like meditations, like self-love meditations and moving through that. Um, another thing which I've gotten into more recently is as discovering the feminine is really connecting with my sensuality um and like my self-pleasure and realizing that's not a bad thing like I read this book recently um called pussy a reclamation and it's like 
you know, like so someone, I don't do it every day because I forget sometimes, but she says like, get a hand mirror out and say hello to your pussy every day. So like I did it this morning <laughs> um, and just say like, hello, gorgeous. Like, how are you doing today? Like connecting to that femininity and just like choosing those moments to love yourself. Or if you have like a beautiful space in a moment and you're not loving yourself, connect to your body and connect to your self pleasure in a way that feels good. Because like, I think when we realize how magnificent our body is and how we are like literally wired for pleasure and like give ourselves permission to feel that within ourselves, it is so fucking empowering. Like mm -hmm. the clitoris has like 8,000 nerve endings, right? Like we as women are like made to be pleasure mm -hmm. vessels. Like mm -hmm. let's connect with that more. And um, so, yeah, I guess a, a lots of different things is stopping the thoughts consciously, changing my state, touching my body, dancing, meditating, and like, stuff around pleasure and like even if the pleasure is just like stroking my body and like just like telling myself I love myself even if it doesn't feel true in that moment you know yeah that's yeah. beautiful that's so beautiful resonate with all of that I um I think I think something that that really helps again is like this recognizing that the thoughts that we have, you know, we do have so, 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 so many. And if we're having recurring thoughts, we've created a pattern. So mm -hmm. a pattern of anything is like, think about a pattern, like a line in the sand and that line is if you, the more you like go over it, the more defined it is, the deeper it gets. Um, and so you just keep going over it and over it and over it and over it. And so that path, we can think of it as like more wet sand because it's easier for like wet sand to be drawn mm -hmm. with. Um, gets, yeah, it's just more resonant. It's there. So it's easier for the water to trickle down onto that path, you know, through that like little line in the sand, almost creating like its little, um, a little lake or something, not a lake, a little river because it's just naturally going to flow there. So we're naturally going to flow to the places that we're patterning more. So the more thoughts we have about our bodies being this way or that way or judging or whatever, the more easily we're going to keep thinking of that. So if, of course, you know what you're saying about stopping the thought or just noticing it to stop it. Cause first we have to notice so we can stop it. That's already key. And it's making the choice, realizing you have a choice. Yes. The pattern's happening, but you also have a choice to redirect yourself and create a new pattern. Does that mean the new pattern of thought is going to be easy? No, because when you then try to draw that pattern next to it in a different way to the other sand, the water's still going to try and go down what's already been patterned in the hardest, like the most resonant way. So it means that when you're first starting to do these things that, you know, we're sharing about helping our bodies um, or helping ourselves, you know, connect with our body, love our soul more, give ourselves what we need, nourish ourselves in a feminine way, is it going to be easy at first? No. And is does it going to feel is it going to feel natural? No, because we haven't created the pattern yet for that to feel as natural. It'll feel good when we do it, but if we expect ourselves to just be like, right, from today onward, I'm just going to be the most loving, amazing, beautiful, non-judgmental person to myself. No, like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's not how it works. Amazing if it could work like that. I'm not saying it like definitely wouldn't maybe you're like an Eckhart Tolle situation where you just like wake up on a bench and you're totally like <laughs> see the world in a different yeah. way and you're sweet um but I think for like 99.99 percent of us it's gonna feel weird at first and it just means mm. keep going make it a practice put energy into it and know that when you have the thoughts that aren't so lovely about your body when you have self-judging thoughts about anything don't judge yourself for judging. That's my key tip. <laughs> That's yeah. my key tip for everyone listening. Like, don't think that, oh, I've been doing so well, but now because I'm like, damn it, I, like, I shouldn't be feeling bad about my body because I'd be like, I, I'm loving myself right now. It means I don't love myself. And it's like, no, stop shooting yourself mm -hmm. and just recognize that that's something that you can let go of as well in that moment. Yeah, I had a bad thought. It's okay. Mm -hmm accepted 100%. yeah and like I say this too um this is this has really helped me um just this really simple affirmation of like I get to be enough right now and continue to improve so like you know not making yourself whatever you did that I did five minutes ago like there's no point it's in the past I cannot change it like I'm not gonna like 
like create a little wormhole of like making myself wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, but I get to understand that I can still improve. It doesn't mean that I don't want to improve upon the person that had that thought or did that thing, mm -hmm. but I still come from this basis of being enough. Mm -hmm. um, and like, like you said, like it takes consistency. And like, I think that can be sometimes where women can get discouraged because it can, it is, it is challenging. Like I'm not like, it takes practice. It is challenging. It is like anything, but it's so fucking worth it at the end yeah. of the day. And I think it's so as well, like in this, you know, journey that you're on, like get support like whether that be like surrounding yourself with friends um you know that are on a similar journey reading a book like getting a coach being in a woman's circle because you know when you're it's so you become who you're surrounded by right and it's so beautiful to be surrounded by people that are also on the same journey because especially if you're at the beginning you can get really triggered to spiral backwards if you're surrounding yourself with people that are also judging themselves they're also like you know over exercising or under exercising or on your eating or whatever it is um so you know be around the community of, of women that are going to uplift you on your path um and to rewire that that part of your brain because it we you know we know now with everything in neuroscience and um that we can change our brain and change our life it just takes time and consistency and like even in a really like i've heard this it takes saying a positive statement seven times that way a negative statement you know so if we say that one negative thing like oh i don't like how i look today you're gonna have to say it seven times to outweigh that within your brain so know that if you think about like the history of your life of all the thoughts that we have told ourselves you know it's gonna take time to outweigh that but again it's so so worth it and then something else that's really helped me is uh, I love this quote by Wayne Dyer it's like you don't believe all the thoughts your brain tells you we seem to think that like because our brain tells us this thought that it's this version of our identity but it's like we are just the observer and I heard this podcast that Oprah shared recently where she like I've always heard that you're the observer you're the observer but I never fully got it until she said you know if you're thinking of a, a red triangle or an oak tree you aren't the oak tree and you aren't the red triangle just like the, I am not beautiful enough. That doesn't mean that that's you. That's just a thought that you're having and you're observing that thought and you get to choose if that gets to be your truth, you know? And I think when we start to realize that we are that observer and not spiral with that thought into the negative, then that's when we start to make the positive change. Yeah. There's another quote just attached to that as well. I, I think it might've been Wayne Dyer or it was Thich Nhat Hanh and it was, I'm not, I think it's Wayne Dyer. Um, you're not the face you observe in the mirror. You're that which is observing the face. Whoa. So it's like, it's Whoa. like yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, that's what you're, you're like, think about that for a second. <laughs> wow. Not, that's good. Like that. That. Yeah. You're that which can see that. So you're something else. Totally. Mm, yeah. hundred percent. And I think as well, like what I've, like people, are like because we can get a, like a uh, put into this thought system that like our weight shape size equals our worthiness but your energy your vibration the person that you show up as like makes people attracted to you mm -hmm. or not mm -hmm. and if people aren't that's that's you know that is their own journey that they are on but like just realizing you know i am you know, uh, heavier than I was as an Olympian, definitely. But I also feel more beautiful and more radiant because I actually like feel like I love myself. And we can, you, someone can always tell whether you get the power of like energy, vibration, and all of that or not. People can always tell. Someone says, "Oh, you're glowing. You look and feel so confident." Someone that looks and feels confident is always more beautiful than you can tell someone who's picking themselves apart. Mm -hmm. um, and that is such a beautiful, like power powerful tool to realize and even you know if women are listening to this and they are um heterosexual like for men as well like men care so much more about confidence and radiance and the beauty that they choose to have what, by the person that they show up as as opposed to just the size that they are or the reflection or their weight or anything like that you know we are the ones that judge ourselves more than men do men don't really care about that stuff as much as we seem to think that they do you know yeah yeah, I love that point that you made. Um, it's really not like it's it's energy. It's just energy, mm -hmm. which means as well, like you know, to whatever whatever you want to do to express the beauty you feel within, 
do that. So it's not, we're not to say, you know, don't wear jewelry, don't wear the pretty mm. things, like do your hair, like it, because that doesn't matter. It's like, mm. let that be an extension of your inner radiance, however you want to radiate. Sometimes my like expression of my beauty, my inner beauty radiating is wearing the like biggest oversized t-shirt that feels really soft on my skin. Sometimes it's wearing a really pretty dress, but it's not attaching to those things are the things that make me beautiful or not. It's that this is just an expression of my beauty right now. And like, just like our body is, just like our body is, you know, it's just a form, but what's on the inside, what we're expressing, the energy is really what's felt, what we feel and what others feel from us. A hundred percent. It's, it's just so powerful when you start to, um, to realize that. And, and, you know, this, this can always, this is quite often used in a very masculine sense, but I've also like resonated recently in a much more feminine and um, soft way is like, if you want to do something you've never, if you want to be someone you've never been, you have to do something you've never done. And, you know, you can think of that and not, you know, like in the past, like my mom would go to like Olympia and like train hard. Ah. But if like, if I want to be someone who fully loves myself, I got to do something I haven't done before. Yeah. So how, how do I show up as that person? Like, what am I going to do differently? What practices am I going to have? I can't, you know, sometimes it's not just saying I'm going to do something, like I'm going to change my thoughts. It's like writing it down, committing to something like even like, you know, creating like a 30 day challenge to like journal about like your gratitude for your body every day or like sitting down and doing a self love meditation and like realizing that it doesn't, I'm not talking about like a diet or exercise or anything like that, but you know, sticking to some type of like schedule or challenge or, or something to work through in a way to have this sense of self love that you haven't had before does take doing something that you haven't done. And how can you commit to that to have so much more self love? So, you know, for me, part of that was moving to Bali. And then more recently, like, I gave myself a challenge like in July to do an hour of Joe Dispenza meditation every day. And so much was like changing my thoughts and changing my beliefs around like myself and my radiance. And that really helped. And the other thing was just like ch challenging myself to journal every single day. And then these things just become habits because they feel good. And like, if you haven't meditated then doing like a self-love meditation, like every day or once a week. But like, I think it's like that balance of like, if you want to find that beautiful, divine, um, feminine, like love and softness for yourself, sometimes implementing like the masculine side of like creating a, a, a challenge to have a sense of consistency to bring that into fruition because it isn't like you said unless you're magical Eckhart Tolle it's not just going to happen by one thought one day alone uh, realize that you want to make a difference yeah yeah and within that just in the masculine feminine like you touched upon you know the masculine the dedication the focus the structure of that supports the freedom our feminine just as much as our inner masculine supports our feminine, just as much as a partner masculine supports the feminine flow to come mm. through and that balance. Um, so I want to I want to wrap it up now and ask you just one last sweet question. That mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's I've been playing around with asking different questions at the end in of these interviews and. Like I've, I've gotten some, yeah, like great downloads and of, of different ones to ask, but it's, I feel like this one is, is the one I've always been wanting to ask and haven't yet that I'll probably keep up with, but let's see, everything changes. Okay. Maybe I'll decide on something else. <laughs> um, but imagine, imagine yourself as a, a young girl. So that innocent young girl who, yeah, is like just learning about life and imagine yourself now as you are now with this beautiful, nurturing, motherly energy that you feel toward the young you, the child you, what is one thing that your mother self, your inner mother wants to say to your inner child? Mm. I guess like the reflection of your body has no determinants of the impact that you can make on this world. It is just a vehicle that you get to fuel in a way to allow your radiance to magnetize you on this human journey and know that you are so worthy despite you know what your brain is going to try and tell you and love as hard on yourself as you love on other people oh <laughs> <I love that. laughs> 
I, love I don't know if my little girl would get some of those words, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I liked it like at a soul level, I feel like you get it. The ending, yeah, the ending for me is like, ooh, like love, love you as much as you love others. That's such a beautiful takeaway for all of us right now. You know, as much as you mm-hmm. love to share love, share it to you too. 100%. Yeah. yeah. And it's so many women are so quick to love on their best friends and make mm-hmm. sure their their girlfriends never say those negative things about themselves. Mm-hmm. So like be your own best friend. You know, there's so much power in that and magic in, in finding that within you to to lift yourself up, to be who you need to be. And um, yeah, I think the, the self-love pinnacle is such a important thing for so many women to clear there um you know another reason why this makes me so passionate is because we have so much to do on this planet and I think especially as women like I think one of the plights of this generation is to clear so much of this like ancestral like trauma and hatred around ourselves Mm -hmm. so that we can not pass it down to our children so that when our little you know rainbow babies come through they can just go and do what they need to do on this planet because they do not have the time or space to be fucking around with thinking if their body is enough and like I think so many of us women right now are doing that work to create space for that greater impact generationally in the future Um, because that's something that always in those moments where I feel like it's a lot or I'm having a hard moment I think of my future children my daughter or son you know creating a world where this is not even a thing you know this is going to be one of those things that we just talk about in the past of like mm-hmm. isn't it crazy that people did that you know mm-hmm. like you like we talk about slavery or you know racism or you know the before gay marriage like isn't it crazy that women used to like hate on themselves like that's how I I hope for future generations to, to, to speak about what we are speaking about now mm, beautiful holding that vision yeah and holding mm-hmm. that vision with you Thank you so much for sharing your time. Um, I'm Thank really you. Happy. Yeah, really happy to have to have been able to like both have space for this. Um, I know it's worked out perfectly. It and has. I love. Thank you for allowing space for me to speak about this as well because it's something I'm so passionate about. But it's um, a little bit of new territory that I haven't necessarily spoken about before. But it's yeah, you hold such a beautiful space to allow mm-hmm. this conversation. So thank you. So You're welcome. Yes, yeah, so welcome.